Hi, everybody. Welcome to CSU Orientation 2020. And we're going to be doing working out and eating healthy with uh, Vila Wu. Vila is a personal trainer and group instructor and has over 25 years of teaching experience, with children and adults. She strives to provide a positive fitness experience and ensures that you feel comfortable when exercising. Vila is also active in promoting health and fitness within the Concordia community. Please welcome Vila. Thank you so much for that introduction, Melvin. I am a personal trainer and I give sessions to adults and children online as well as outdoors and of course when weather permits. I am a group instructor at the gym. Classes do begin next week. I teach lengthen and strengthen on Monday and Wednesday and HIT on Tuesday and Thursdays. So speaking of HIT, which stands for high intensity training, that's what we'll be doing today. So I'll be giving a, an intro to high intensity training. Now the word intensity means go at your own pace. If you haven't worked out in a while, or if you're new to training, then please take your time and listen to your body. If you feel any discomfort, just stop and do the exercise. Sometimes we need a little bit more time to warm up our joints and our muscles. Now it's really important to not force your movement. So for example, we're doing a squat, and if you don't go down at about uh, 45 degrees, then stick to 45 degrees. Be careful not to force your movement and try to go lower, and that's when you start to feel pain. So be careful not to compromise your form, which can lead to injury. So for today, we're going to do high intensity training, which means we are going to do about three to four exercises in a row for uh, one circuit. And we'll be doing two circuits. We're going to start off with warming up. We'll do our exercises and then cool down. So this will be about a 30 minute workout. So all you need is, for today, all you need is a mat or a towel to support your low spine when we do some floor work. But most of the exercises will be done standing and some planking hand push-ups. The exercises will be mainly um, the classic exercises you will find in most um, videos or even magazines. We'll be doing squats and planks and crunches. But it's important that we do good form or practice good form. So let's start with our warm up. So with the warming up, we're just going to draw circles with your shoulders. We're going to warm up the upper body. So we're doing dynamic stretching right now. So bring it back. Take a medium stance, your knees slightly bent, and try to keep your posture nice and tall. Now bring it forward as if you're swimming. You want to make sure you're looking straight ahead. Try to keep your neck, the upper part of your spine, in line, aligned with the rest of your spine. And just slow down. Now we're going to warm up our lower body. So we're going to do some leg swings. You can use a chair or a wall for balance. So you're going to just sweep forward and back. And I want you to just drop that foot on the floor so it's nice and relaxed on the hips. Right now, we're warming up the hips. This is great for hip mobility. So again, just listen to your body. You don't have to kick very high. So you can do it nice and gradual. And then the warmer you feel, your body feels, you can kick a little bit higher. The most important thing is that your body stabilized. You're not rocking back and forth. A couple more times. So three, two, and one. Other side. I'm going to kick forward. And sweep back. Nice strong core. Open the shoulders. Avoid grounding. So when you're engaging that core, it helps you maintain balance. Up and down. Hips forward. Three, two, and one. The good thing about dynamic stretching is that we get to prepare our joints and muscles for a workout. So take a wider stance, feet parallel. We're just going to shift from side to side. So warming up the inner thighs and the groin as well as the glutes. Now you still keep your shoulders open, so avoid bounding. Shift side to side. So you want to sort of push your hips back as opposed to meeting with your knees. So you want to keep your joints nice and comfortable. Side to side. Again, avoid rounding. Lift up your body nice and tall. 
shift. Make sure to breathe. A couple more times. Three, two, nice and easy, and one. So for our circuit, we're going to be elevating our heart rate a little bit, strengthening our muscles, and working on coordination. So I just want you to take this to a leg jog. We'll do this for maybe about 30 seconds, just to pump up the heart rate a little bit and to prepare our bodies, keep it nice and warm, nice and soft. Now, if you have some injuries and you can't jump up and down, you can just take it to a walk. Just the same. You can march a little bit, march a little bit, lift up your knee a little bit higher if you like. So nice and soft. Try to land on the balls of your feet. Make less noise. Relax those hands and fingers. Relax the shoulders. Avoid bringing your shoulders towards your ears. You should breathe. One more time, and we'll start with circuit one. Then let's take it to a walk. Okay, so for circuit one, there are four exercises. The first one is going to be a march. So again, you can do low impact or a little bit higher impact. So my knees are coming up just slightly. Body nice and tall. Where I'm going. You can jog forward or jog back. So you can use the space around you. So we'll go for five, four, three, two, one. You take a wider stance, a little wider. We'll go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and another 10 seconds, just regular march. 10, nine, eight, four, three, two, and one. Walk it out. Keep on breathing. Your body should feel nice and warm. Next exercise is a squat. So I'm gonna demonstrate and we can do it together. Feel free to just follow along. So when we squat, I want you to think about just shin your hips back and press it back out. It's important that the knees do not pass your toes. So through repetition, this can lead to a lot of knee pains as well as a hip. So when you come down, think about leading with your hips as if you're reaching towards an invisible chair behind you. Sit and back up. So we're going to add the arms as we go down, lift up and back down. So by raising the arms, so it keeps your posture in check. It makes it more difficult to round the body. So we're going to do this together for 12 repetitions. Get ready, get in position. Feet at the shoulder width apart. You can turn your feet out slightly if it's more comfortable. Ready, engage that core. Lift up the arm and push the hip back. And arms back down for one, two, three, Exhale as you come up. Six, watch those knees. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go for two more. Eleven and twelve. Now, squats are great for the glutes and for your legs in general. The third exercise is going to be a plank. Plank or push up. Now, I'm going to just show you proper, so it's really important to practice proper form to prevent any injury. So, we're going to use it for floor space. So, we'll start with a plank position where you will have your hands. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the plank, but it's really important to know that the, your shoulder is aligned with your wrists. So, you have to shoulder width apart. You want to keep your hips leveled. You want to avoid any type of rope. Rotating, rotation, twisting to your right or to your left. So this here is a plank. Or keep your elbows just slightly bent. You can hold here, or you can take it down to a push-up, which is no, let's just do a plank. 
from here. You can slide your slide in your knee. This is for the mountain climber. I'm just demonstrating. Okay, I'm going to do this about 10 times. So get in position, hands on the mat or the floor, extend your legs, hold nice and strong. So left and right will be one repetition. So you ready? So you're going to bring it in for one. You can drag your toes on the floor or you can lift it up. As long as those hips are stable and aligned to the ground. Let's go. Four. Five. Keep the abs strong. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. You can stop at any time if you're tired and join in again. Eleven. And twelve. And bring it down. But there are always options. As I said before, you can always just slide your feet or bring it up. And for those of you who want to go a little bit faster, you can go ahead. It's just important to control your movement. So your heart rate should be elevated right now, which is great. Fourth exercise is going to be a classic crunch. It's going to use a mat or grab a towel. It's really important that your spine is protected. It's going to lie down. Flat on the floor, head is rested. My legs are at 90 degrees. This one is called a heel tap. Now, I want you to look at my low back right now. It's really important that uh, you don't have this huge gap between the floor and your low back where I can slide my hand under your knee. Try to exhale and glue that spine to your mat or to the floor. So demonstration, heel tap. Legs at a 90, arms to the side. I'm just going to slowly lower my feet to the floor, the he my heels, and back up to 90. Now, if you feel it's difficult to lower your heels to the floor, then just lower it as far as your body allows you to. It's just as effective. So then go for 12. Get ready? Maybe so legs at a 90 degrees. Exhale, ready, and lower. Down for one. So exhale on your way up, squeeze the abs. Three, four, five. So use your hips to lower. So it's not just lowering, it's not just uh, bending the knees. The knees actually don't move. Keep going, exhale, do your abs work. It's really important to strengthen your core. That helps with every single Exercise. Exhale up. Three more. Two. And last one. Excellent. So that was called the heel tap. I'm going to slowly get up. I'm going to repeat these exercises for round two. So just to sum up, we start off with the jog, then we did squats. We did our plank, well, we did um, mountain climbers, and then we did crunches. All right, let's get ready for round two. So we're going to take it to a march. So this is low impact, ready for high impact, and bring up the knees. If you want to make this a little bit more intense, then drive up the knees a little bit higher. So go at your own pace. Listen to your body. Don't force any movements. Now that your body's a bit more worked up, you can go a little bit faster, lift up the knees a little bit more, change directions, just have fun with the movement. So use your arms. Keep going. Up the knees. Keep your posture nice and tall. Push the hips back. I want 
to squeeze up using all the leg muscles, glute muscles, up. Oops, sorry here. And come back down. Arms up, squat down. For two. Three. Squeeze up. Four. Five. Activating all these muscles. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. By raising your arms, this also helps elevate your heart rate a bit more. You did 12, just throw in number 13 and walk it out. The fun thing about squats, there are so many variations. That was just one. Third exercise, but if you are mountain climbers, and get into a plank position. I like to use a mat, it's a bit more comfortable on my, my hands. So picture your, your um, shoulder is over your wrists. Because if you go a little bit too forward, you're a bit too farther away, you're going to feel more tension on your shoulders. Let's walk back. So make sure your hips nice and level, parallel to the floor. You want to avoid collapsing that spine. So it's safer to actually lift up your glutes a bit if you need to. So ready? Mountain climbers, left and right is one repetition. Ready? Three, two, and one. Drive it in. One, two, three, four. Kick it in. Exhale. Careful not to drop that neck. Keep going. Exhale. Nice and strong. Stabilize that core. Dig it in. Three, two. You can slide it just as effective. And one. Ooh, nicely done. All right. Roll over to the, your back. Make sure it's well supported. Legs at 90 degrees. Arms out. Relax that head, your neck on the floor. Pull in that belly. Ready? Heel taps for 12. Bring it down. Bring it up. For two. Three. Four. So when you bring up your legs, bring it back to 90 degrees. Feel your abs work. Crunch up. Nice and strong. So five more. A very simple, effective exercise. It's also a safe exercise and very comfortable on your neck. So remember, you can't lower your heels all the way down. Just do it at 45. As long as you're engaging the core. One more. Lift it up. Exhale, bring it down and roll over and slowly stand back up. You want to be careful not to get up too quickly because you don't want to get dizzy. So that was circuit one. Have a sip of water and we're going to continue with circuit two. So keep on moving <clears throat> to a march. Take a few breaths. The good thing about high intensity training, you get an excellent overall body workout within a short amount of time. So there's no reason uh, to not exercise. And if you're watching videos at home, you don't have to do the full 30 minutes. If you don't have time, you can just do the first circuit. Circuit two, we're going to start with the plastic jumping jacks. So you want to make sure your feet are in a nice wide stance. And instead of going up and down, I'm going to crisscross my arms. We get to work our chest at the same time. Arms opened, legs opened, and we're going to take to a jumping jack, crisscross. For low impact, same thing, you just open and close. Bring your leg back. You're still using the arm. You can go as fast or as slow as you want, as long as your form is nice and proper. Spine nice and long. Keep going. 
Crisscross. Use the chest muscles and use the back muscles, upper back muscles to squeeze back. So again, depending on how much work you want to put into your exercise. A couple more, over about 25. Nice and tall. Squeeze the chest, open up with your back. Three, two, and one. Walk it up. Jumping jacks are fantastic. You definitely elevate your heart rate within seconds. Second exercise will be traveling squat into a calf raise. This is a fun one, one of my favorites. So traveling squat, what we're gonna do, we're gonna stay, I'm gonna demonstrate right here. We're gonna stay right here into a low squat position for as low as your body allows you to. And we're gonna just travel one, two, three, four. From here, we're gonna lift it up into lift up to our calves. Take two calf raise back down. You're gonna travel back to the other side for four repetitions. So let's do this together. Think about a medium stance. Sit back. Hold here. You want to try to stay in this level. Try not to come up if possible. So use those glute muscles, nice and strong. And travel for four repetitions. Ready? Squeeze. Two, three, four. Hold here and press up and hold for four, three, two, one. Bring back down. Wait for ankles and calves. Travel. One, two, three, four. Get ready. Give, give it all you got. Raise it up. Hold. Nice and strong. Squeeze the calf muscles. Three, two, one. Bring it back down. Other side. One, two. Squeeze. Three and four. So great for the glutes. And up we go. And hold for balance. Use those calves. Use your core. Bring it back down. Sit back down. Other side. One, two, three, four. Bring it up. If you play basketball, you play any sports, great exercise. Great calf, ankles, great coordination. And back down. And release. Shake it out. We're gonna go back to the floor. We're gonna do some push-ups. Now that our chest and our body is nice and warmed up. Now there are different ways to do a push-up, but most importantly, make sure it's safe. So for push-ups. Now, of course, you can do it on your hands and your feet. This is just like a plank position. You could always rest your knees on the ground or you don't want to rest your knees on the ground, you can always place your hands on your sofa. It's actually, it actually feels great because it feels like you're not using any assistance with your knees. All right. Right here, in position. So here's a little tip. So the wider the base, you get more support. So the closer the base, the feet more narrow, it makes it a bit more challenging. So you can always play around with uh, the base of your, your feet. So I'm going to take a medium stance. So let's begin here. I'm just going to bend my elbows. And bring it down as far as your body allows you to. This is still a demonstration. Hips leveled. Avoid doing this. It's really hard in the back. It's going to lift up. You know what? Even if you can, just lower the elbows an inch and push back up. That's excellent because the more you practice, I promise you it gets so much more, more easy. So you can begin with your knees, but make sure that you're on an angle. Be careful your knees is not too close to your uh, hips. Okay, on your position. Ready? Bend the elbows and bring it down. Exhale back up. Just do as many as you can at your own pace. Most important thing is you're bending those elbows. Push it back up. Abs strong. Squeeze the chest. So push-ups is just an upper body, using your core to squeeze your glutes. For about 10, up. And last one. And walk it in. Then roll over to your back. 
and going to do some bridges. Keep your back to support it or that. And your head is rested as well. Now I want you to slide your heel towards your index finger. This will be your starting position. You don't want it too far away from your fingers, so I want you to focus on your glutes. So if you have some space between your knees, maybe a foot, a little less. Nice medium stance. So from here, it's time to press up. Important that the hips are leveled. You don't want it rocking back and forth. So squeeze with your glutes and lower and press back up. So go for a 12. If you feel comfortable to do with one leg, you can do six on each side. The most important thing, you don't want to rock back and forth. Get in position now, slide the heels back, feet flat, engage that core, press it up, squeeze, and back down. So you can hold for about two seconds, and lower. For three, four, five, exhale up six, Focus on glutes. So again, if you want to do the last six on one leg, if you're ready to do one leg, switch over. Keep your legs parallel. Focus on this glute and squeeze up. Hips leveled. Nice and controlled. Up. Look at the ceiling. Then that's about six. Take a rest. Then roll over. Stand up. And then repeat this round. Again, jumping jacks. You ready? Okay, keep your breath before we begin. Wide stance, arms out. Make sure you don't have any obstructions. Ready? Crisscross. For 25. So remember, you can do this low impact as well. And take it to a walk. Breathing nice and tall. You change directions, make it fun. You can go all the way around and another direction. This cross, use your chest muscles. So you don't want to flop your arms. Nice and strong. Five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Traveling squats to a calf raise. Get in position, get into your squat position. Ready? Push down, push your hips back, holding this position. I'm gonna to walk to one side, walking towards you. I'm gonna squeeze your glute muscles. Two, three, four, arms back, and take two a rise. Hold on the balls of your feet and your toes and bring it back down. Other side. Squeeze. Two, three, four. Ready? Bring it up and hold. Two, three, four. Back down. Squeeze. Two, three, four. Arms back. You can use your arms for momentum and hold. Balance. Four. Three, two, one, bring it down. Last one, two, three, four. Ready, bring it to your eyes. Give me all you got. Press it up and hold. Arms up, elbow slightly bent. And one, and release. Good set. Not done yet. We're doing push ups. So many fun ways to do push ups. Stay in position. So remember, you can always use your knees. You just make sure your knees or my upper leg is on a slight angle. Keep your position nice and strong. Elbows slightly bent. Ready? And lower your body. Actually, you bend your elbows first, then lower. Press back up. Let's go for 10. Exhale as you come up. Most important thing, you want to keep 
Get back, that low back leveled. A lot of little things to remember. But the more you practice, everything will fall into place. Two more. Last one. And up. Excellent. Push ups. Such an excellent exercise. The targets, upper body, and your core. You can also focus on your glutes too. Believe it or not. Okay, bridge is the next exercise. And the last one, we're gonna get to cool down. Back flat. So remember, pull your heels towards your middle finger. Ready? And press up your hips. Single leg or double. That's up to you. Press it up, use your glutes, and bring it back down. And up, hold for two. Exhale, four, five, six, six more, keep going. So remember, if you're doing one leg, squeeze the glutes on the supporting leg. Up, Just to keep the legs parallel. Two more, last one, and release, bring it down. And just pull in your knees. Take a few breaths. That was the end of um, circuit two. So great job with this 30 minute circuit training. We're going to cool down with some stretches. So it's really important to stretch. This helps relieve some um, soreness. It can relieve some um, Lactic acid build up. So well, let's stand up <clears throat> to stretch. It's also a great way to bring your body temperature and your heart rate back to normal. So we're going to just start with our legs. So once you just put one move forward, one leg is bent, and imagine you're doing a, it's almost like a squat as if you're sitting back to so get to stretch your hamstring right now. The hamstring is located. Back of your leg, it's a big muscle. Find your balance. So lean forward, try to keep that back nice and straight. Exhale, hold. Do some static stretching right now. If your body's nice and warm, you can hold the stretching position. position. And release. Now we're gonna stretch your quadricep, front of your leg. Pull that ankle, stand up nice and tall, but stretch front of your leg. Nice long stretch. As we work our squats, we did squats, we work the glutes, our quadriceps and hamstrings. So we're just giving it a little stretch right now. Nice and tall. If ever you feel some discomfort, you can just release and continue again. Now let's release. Now I want you to just slide this foot back a nice long um, distance. Press the back foot flat, gonna stretch your calf. So the front leg, you can bring it to a slight lunge forward until you feel that stretch in the back leg. It's really important that your foot is flat. Shoulders open, keep it relaxed. Exhale. Nice stretch. Get ready to work the other leg. One foot forward, sit back. My toe is pointed towards the ceiling. So my foot is flexed, stretching out my hamstrings. The lean forward, this is a forward bend. Get a nice little pull behind the knee as well. Exhale. Relax. Get ready to stretch the quadriceps, same leg. Grab the ankle, give yourself a little pull. Right now, my legs are parallel. So, so just think about pointing your knee towards the floor. So feel which muscle is being stretched. Hold. 
hold. If you would like, you can lean forward slightly and bring the leg back. But just be careful if you're experiencing some knee pain, you know to stop. Then release that leg, pull this leg back, foot flat, my knees lunging forward. Find that stretch. So it's important to size up a bit if you need to pull that leg back a little bit, do so. Exhale. Feel that stretch on your calf. So you get some calf raises today. Three, two, and one. Press together, feet together. Just gonna bring your arms up. And open to your arms, open your arms to, to until it's parallel to the ground, the T position. We're gonna take this to a spinal twist. Then rotate to one side, hips forward, and other. Get a nice stretch in the upper back. And you will also get to give your spine a little, a little twist. So on a daily basis, you find yourselves walking forward or bending over. It's very rare that we are rotating. So this is a good way to keep your spine healthy and lubricated. And release. Just one more stretch. We're going to stretch the forearms a little bit. Especially if you're using the computer a lot, and sometimes we get to stretch our forearms. So I'm just going to have you pull your fingers back and press forward. I'm keeping my elbow just slightly bent. So the longer you hold the stretch, you're going to feel a stretch in your forearms, even the back of your elbow. So exhale and release. And other side. It up. So when we're cooling down, we're stretching. Still, I want you to remember to focus on keeping your spine so nice and long. So avoid rounding. We tend to do a lot of that when we're sitting. So this is a good way to, to um, keep your posture in check. Open up the shoulders, spine nice and long, and release. Shake it out. So good job, everyone, with circuit training. Uh, for the next few minutes, please go hydrate. And I'm going to set up for part two, where I will talk about um, how I eat healthy and how I plan my meals for the week. So Melvin, you can take over.
So we'll be starting. Okay, yes, we are live. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for waiting, everyone. So welcome to Healthy Eating. Now, I'm gonna share with you today some of the healthy foods that I prepare at home. Now, I like to make as much food as possible or cook at home. And I like to prepare foods for at least the next three to four days. This way, I don't have to think about what am I gonna have for lunch or what am I gonna have for dinner? Now, I'd like, you, I'd like you to ask yourself this question. What does healthy eating mean to me? Now, to me, it means eating more unprocessed foods or less processed foods. This way, I get to eat out less. And when I shop at grocery stores, I, I pick up more whole foods, such as fruits and vegetables. And I try to minimize, well, I do minimize buying processed foods, such as if you walk down the frozen aisle, there is always ice cream, there's pizza, there is fish sticks and chicken burgers. All very delicious, but I try to minimize that and stick with healthy eating. I'm gonna give you some examples on some of the foods that I eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, as well as snacks. I like to start with uh, breakfast. So slide one, please. So for breakfast, as you can see, now these are just some of the items I have uh, listed. I have eggs, yogurt, oatmeal, toast, and fruit. Now for myself, I always have a fruit plus one or two other items on this list, now depending how hungry I am, and as well as what I have planned for the morning or lunch, so breakfast can tie me over. I like to um, start with eggs. Now as for eggs, there are many ways you can make or cook eggs and it's also filling. It's also a, a, um, a wonderful protein. Now you can boil eggs, you can make scrambled eggs or whichever way you like. But the beauty of eggs, so let's remove the slide for a second. So the beauty of eggs, so oh, here are my breakfast items. Now with eggs, a great way to cook eggs is I boil maybe three or four of them. This way I have it for the rest of the week. Now I tend to alternate my breakfast. For example, every second day I would have oatmeal and every second day I may have an egg. So if I don't have to cook and it's boiled, I place it in the fridge, all I have to do is remove the peel and it's ready to go. I don't have to think about cooking. Another thing about eggs, you could also use it when it's boiled. You can also put it in a salad. So you can really have fun with, with eggs. And it's also very easy to cook if you don't want, if you want to minimize cleaning. Uh, as for me, I like to minimize cleaning. So when I make oatmeal, I make it for the rest of the week. Now, if you really don't want to cook or boil oatmeal, you could always make overnight oatmeal. It is so simple. All you have to do is put some oats and water, put it in the fridge and it's ready the next day. Now with that um, overnight oats, you can add fruit, you can add yogurt. So whatever you have that I have on that list or that on, the, on that slide, you can actually mix and match. And that's what I like about foods. Where you mix and match, I don't have to think about what I'm gonna eat. Thing about yogurt in a container, I just scoop it out and it's all ready. I add, um, I like to buy plain yogurt. And the reason why is because I also limit added sugars. Now, the beauty of buying plain yogurt is that I can add fresh fruit. If I want a little bit of sweetener, then I add maple syrup or some people like honey. So it's totally up to you. Again, the beauty of buying plain yogurt, you can control the amount of sugar you put in your foods. Um, I also have toast and nut butter on the list. Now, when it comes to breads, I like to buy either whole wheat, rye, sourdough, or stuff with a lot of seeds, so it's definitely a lot more hearty. I don't eat a lot of, I don't eat bread for every meal. I may have it for breakfast, 
or maybe have it for lunch, or maybe sometimes I don't have bread at all. But I do eat everything in moderation. Now, in terms of nut butter, again, it's very it's a very quick breakfast. Spread it on toast. You can buy peanut butter. There's cashew butter, almond butter. You can always change it up if you're ever bored. Now, the beauty of peanut butter, you can also add this into yogurt. You can add it into your oatmeal. Uh, you can mix it with your fruit. So again, mix and match, make it fun and make it interesting. And as for fruits, it's summertime, so I really like to take advantage of all the seasonal fruits. I'm sure you've heard of this before. Eat your colors. Um, I mean, look at all the fun colors. You have tangerines, plums, and pears. You can add all your fruits into yogurt, into oatmeal. Again, mix and match and have fun. Now, for some people who don't eat breakfast, I mean, I hear this a lot. I'm never hungry. And I used to be one of those when I was in high school. I'd wake up and I would go. But the thing is, I trained my brain and my stomach to not be hungry. So what I did was that when I wake up, I would just grab one item, which would just be a fruit. So I would start with a fruit, and then I would gradually add other items, such as oatmeal or an egg, to my breakfast. Because the more you exercise, you will find that your um, hunger will increase. So your body will crave for these nutrients. So this is... So these are all the fun stuff you can have for breakfast. Uh, again, these are just some items. And of course, if some of you have allergies or intolerances, then you know what to stay away from. So is there anything else I wanted to add to breakfast? I think that's it for now. I'm going to put the breakfast items away. And now I want to talk about lunch and dinner. Now for the slide for lunch and dinner, which will appear right now. The reason why I place these two together is because the items that I have for lunch or dinner are the same. I just mix and match. So as you can see, I have proteins, veggies, and grains and legumes. So these items are always on my plate. Now, if I eat meat, I eat vegetables. I try to enjoy as many uh, different types of foods as I can. Now, in terms of, you know, buying white meat or dark meat, I generally buy uh, chicken breasts, but I also buy chicken legs and thighs as well. So I don't cut out anything in my, what I eat. So it really depends on you and what your stomach can handle. So it's really important to listen to, to your body. Now, in terms of cooking, now, as you notice, I have, um, it says tips. I bake two to three meats in one pan. The reason why I do that is because I like to cook all my meals at the end of the week so I have something to eat for the next four days and I don't have to worry about what I'm going to prepare. So for example, so let's take away the slide for a second. So aluminum foil has become my best friend. So when I cook, so for example, I would buy chicken, pork, and fish. So I would put chicken in one sheet of aluminum and I would make, I would just fold the edges as if you're making a little envelope for each meat. And I would place all these in the same pan and I stick it in the oven. So everything cooks in one time. Now just keep in mind pork and fish make what well, cooks faster than chicken or sometimes even turkey. So I take those items out, leave the chicken in the oven. So this way I have all my proteins for the rest of the week and I just pick and choose what I want for the next few days. I mean it's so handy to have food ready for you. So again the reason why I make these little folds this way the the meat juices don't seep into the other the other meats. And this also minimizes washing dishes. Now, of course, you can always cook your chicken, meat, or fish on a pan with olive oil, which I do as well. But times when I know I'm very busy in certain weeks, I try to cook as much as possible and to avoid washing dishes sometimes. So this is one great way to feed yourself the rest of the week. And when you have food in your fridge, I know that it pre prevents me from eating out. 
And eating out is uh, something we can talk about later. I just want to focus more on lunch and dinner. So that was proteins. Now, in terms of seasoning, it's totally up to you. I add a little bit of salt, sugar, uh, sugar, I don't put sugar, but salt, pepper. But sometimes I do put a little bit of honey on my um, salmon and I put it in the oven. So for seasoning, it's totally up to you how you want to flavor it. So that's, uh, those are proteins. So vegetables. Now, the beauty of vegetables is that there is a lot out there in terms of greens. If you can put the slide back. Now, the main vegetables that I eat are broccoli, spinach, kale. Uh, I love colors. Bell peppers, such as red, orange, and yellow. And that could be put into any dishes. And of course, cherry tomatoes. Now, I like cherry tomatoes because it's bite-sized and I don't have to cut it up. For some reason, I just enjoy cherry tomato a lot more than a whole tomato unless it's from a garden. So I'm a little bit picky that way. Now, if you find that it's a little bit difficult to have to, well, not difficult, but if you find that you don't want to invest too much time in having to wash the broccoli and chop it up and then cook it, then you can always buy it frozen. There's nothing wrong with that. If you find that's the only way you're gonna have your greens or vegetables, then you can buy it frozen, but you can always add fresh veggies to it. For example, you know, you have your, let's say frozen broccoli. You can always just cut up some bell pepper and some carrot and add it to the mix. So you can mix and match. Or you can always buy, there's also prepared salads, some with arugula, some with romaine. There are some mixed salads. It comes in a container. Some of them are already pre-washed. So if that's the only way you're gonna have your greens, then it's available for you. So it's also what you put inside the salads. Now salads are lots of fun. I really enjoy eating uh, a nice salad. And you can add so many wonderful things to it. So let's um, remove the slide for a second. So back to salads, it's up to you how you want to dress it up. So as I said earlier, I love cherry tomatoes uh, in my salads and avocado. It's just, you can just cut it up, dice it up. You can add nuts to your salads. Um, you can add, I like to add fruit to my salad because I'm not a big, I'm not big on dressing. Some people like oil and vinegar which is a classic and it's wonderful and easy to make but i like to add fresh fruit because it gives you some extra juices and i like that natural sweetness so play around with your salads now in terms of um, greens again try to eat your colors it's important that you enjoy what you eat um, if you dread eating something then you may most likely not want to eat it but it's important to just try different things so again, greens, you can make, uh, in terms of greens, yeah, for me, I make um, three different greens and I put it in the fridge. And again, every day I look at my fridge, I will select my protein, I select my veggies, and I would select my grains, my greens, my grains, <laughs> which we will talk about in a second. I just want to talk about salads again. There's also something called quinoa salad, and it is a grain. So I'm going to show you some grains. We can remove the, um, no, let's throw some grains over here. So grains, there's, I like to have, oh, here we go. See, brown rice. Some of the grains here are the barley. The fun thing about grains, the easy thing about making grains, you just boil water. Just read the instructions for the, uh, the ratio. I have barley. I love lentils. It's a great, uh, makes a great protein and it's filling. Then there's quinoa. Sometimes I don't feel like having rice, so I have quinoa. It's a tiny, tiny little speck. But when you cook it, it actually sort of inflates into this light, fluffy, it's like a light, fluffy rice. You can have it cold and you can have it hot. Now I like using this type of grain for a cold quinoa salad. So whatever it is to add to your green salad, such as avocado, nuts, tomato, cucumber, fruit. You can also add it to your grains. 
or to uh, quinoa. So that's so salads make a fun meal. You can also add your proteins to your salads. So different types of grains is totally up to you. It's always nice to change it up. Um, I do eat white rice. I do have white bread sometimes, but most of the time I would stick with the um, the slow digestive carbs, which is uh, brown rice, uh, oatmeal, grains such as barley and lentil. Um, it's good. I like to mix it up. So it's a good way. To, it's great to just try different things and to try different um, recipes. This way you don't get bored of what you eat. Now, oh, of course, sweet potato is also a wonderful, um, uh, I guess, carb I add to my meal. You get the nice sweetness and the nice texture, and it's also filling. So again, you can mix and match, play with your food. It's um, I find it to be a when you have all these things ready uh, in the fridge and at your reach. So let me talk a little bit about proteins again. Um, you could use it in many different ways. You can make sandwiches, you can make wraps, and you can add it to a salad, as I said before. So it's just a matter of adding uh, whole foods such as tomatoes, cucumbers, avocado. Um, I'm just uh, reviewing some of the foods that I talked about. So that's lunch and dinner. So let's go back to the slide one more time. Just a quick review. But proteins, veggies, and grains. So those are the three families that I always include in my plate of food for lunch, dinner, and for lunch and dinner. So have fun with it. Play around with the foods. Again, you can just put everything in the oven to cook everything at once. It really saves a lot of time. All right, so let's go to uh, snacks. So let's um, show the slide for snacks. Now, as you notice for snacks, all the items on the snack slide is very similar to the breakfast slide. So whenever, I look, whenever I'm looking for, well, I do eat a snack once or twice a day. So I pretty much go to my breakfast foods. If I do want something sweet, so let's remove that slide for a second. So we have almonds and raisins. Now I enjoy a little bit of sweets sometimes, and I find that almonds is a great snack. It's filling and it's crunchy. I buy, these are plain um, almonds without salt. And of course you can buy cashew or whatever kind of nuts that you enjoy. And if I want a, a little bit of sweets, I add a little bit of raisins to my almonds. I love the, the natural sweetness and the texture and chewiness of, of raisins. Now with this, sometimes I add it to my yogurt as a snack. So again, you just mix and match, you know, don't be afraid to add things to your yogurt or is it gonna taste good? If you're not sure, then you can just eat it separately. So you have all these different textures to play with and you get to enjoy. Now, avocado and toast is also one of my favorite snacks. I get my natural fats with an avocado. And you can always still eat it with nuts and raisins on the side. Why not? So snacks, I do not eat too much. I don't have too many sugars in my snack foods unless they're natural snacks or natural sweetness and, of course, fruit. I try to include fruit uh, in all of my meals. So it could be breakfast, snack, and dinner, as well as vegetables. Now snacks, sometimes um, we talked about yogurt and, oh, and sweetener. Now, as I mentioned, I like to add um, maple syrup or honey to some of my foods. Now, yes, sugar is sugar, but these come from natural sources from natural sources. And again, it's important to have maple syrup or any sweeteners in moderation. At least that's what I practice for myself. So these are my snacks. Now, when I have all these foods at home, I really 
I don't avoid, but I still eat out, but I eat out much less because there is so much salt and sugar when I take out foods or desserts. And there's nothing wrong with having for myself, nothing wrong with treating myself to a pizza. And pizza is one of my favorite takeout foods. Now, when I do take out pizza, what I do is I make sure I have some greens or vegetables ready at home. So I add healthy foods, healthy foods to my takeout foods. I would even cut up extra bell pepper and I would add it to my pizza. And here's a, here's a cool thing I do with uh, pizza crust. Now I love thin crust pizza. Now with that extra crust on the side, I would have it with the uh, avocado. So that, so instead of reaching out for the third or fourth slice of pizza with that avocado and the vegetables, it helps fill me up a little bit more and I have a bit more healthy foods to balance the takeout foods. So again, you can always play around with processed foods and unprocessed foods together. And this way you can still enjoy eating out. But, this, but just remember eating out becomes a habit just as cooking food at home. If it becomes a habit, all the better. It saves you money, it saves you time. Well, time in terms of what am I going to eat? Because once everything is prepared, it makes things so much easier. Let me see if I'm missing anything. So we have our snacks and breakfast. I think I wrapped up everything. So when you, sh just a little tip again. So when you're cooking, try to cook for the next couple of days because things like oatmeal, um, your meats, it will, it will last. It will keep fresh for the next couple of days in your fridge. So don't be afraid to, to cook extra. It just makes things so much easier. And enjoy all your foods, enjoy your colors, and um, keep healthy. And if you have any questions, you know, please, um, please write in. So Melvin, if you wanna hop in. Well, hello, everybody. Well, thank you, Villa, so much. Um, um, is there anything else that you want to add before I wrap this up? You know what? No, I do. Just one thing. I just want to talk about in terms of timing. I mentioned earlier for breakfast, sometimes you have a bigger breakfast, such as, you know, I would have, let's say, two eggs. I would make an omelet with tomato and mushrooms and... Um, toast and whatnot. I would make a bigger breakfast sometimes because I know I give classes at 12 or one o'clock sometimes. So I make sure that I have enough nutrients that would tie me over while I'm working because it's very difficult. Um, if my stomach starts to, you know, to growl while I'm giving, I hit class, it gets really uncomfortable. So again, you know, think about how much you need to eat uh, and what, what your day is like. So time you're, uh, you're eating. Okay. Thank you so much, Villa. That was incredibly insightful. And um, thank you everybody who tuned in for our, um, our Working on Eating Healthy workshop. And um, hope to see you at all our other events. Have a good day, everybody. <laughs>